everybody. Thank you for coming. We're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn, and this meeting is being Zoom recorded. Is there anybody here for public comment? Not seeing anything. We're going. I'm trying to raise my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, was that Fabio? Yes. Okay, great. You have you have three minutes. Yes. Uh, just a little comment uh, about like I think it's agenda item fifteen uh, for possible uh, uh, outdoor licensing system for entertainment. My comment would be that each location that gets released like an outdoor license would have a maximum of one event per calendar month to preserve like. That's it. Okay, thank you. It's just it will be a limit to the number of uh, of events for each geographical location. Each. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for a public comment? Okay, without seeing anybody, we're going to move on to the agenda, which is quite full today. So we're going to be here for a little while. I thank everybody in advance for your patience. Um, Item number three, application for a new entertainment license for Anna Bandera Chocolates, Northampton, LLC, DBA, Anna Bandera Chocolates at 48 Main Street. This is for a proposed live acoustic music with minimal amplification, amplification, small jazz combos, singer songwriters, traditional music, classical music, etc. This would be Sunday through Saturday, sometime between the hours of 10 a.m., Sunday brunch, and 10 p.m. on weekend evenings. And do we have somebody here from, hello. Hello. Can you state your name for the record? Dave Hoy. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good, thank you. You wanna um, tell us a little bit about what you hope to be doing? Yeah, well, uh, I was here last, last month for the Common Victuals License. And I just wanted to be able to have, you know, we, we have, we're, we're taking over Patisserie Linux. Um, and we're putting in our, our own little cafe chocolate shop there. Um, it's a nice space. I wanted to be able to have, you know, somebody playing in that space. Uh, I'm a musician by training and education. So that's, you know, near and dear to my heart. I want to be able to uh, offer that in our space. That's really it. I don't have big plans. I'm not looking for do, doing concerts or anything, just yep. kind of having somebody to be able to play in space. And would this be on your first floor? Street level yeah. space or upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just have we just have the one floor. Okay. Uh, yeah. Although there is that upstairs space for someday, maybe. For someday. <laughs> Bigger chocolate dreams. Yeah. Okay, Helen, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions now. Okay, I have no further questions. It sounds great. Just be mindful of neighbors. If you receive complaints, try and handle them graciously. Um, Great, then I'll make a motion to approve the application for the new entertainment license at Anna Bandera Chocolates at 48 Main Street. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Moving along to item number four, applications for change of manager on two all alcohol package store licenses for Cooper's Dairyland Incorporated, DBA Cooper's Corner at 31 Main Street in Florence. The proposed manager is Michael Brignolo and Cooper's Dairyland Incorporated, DBA State Street Wine and Spirits at 51 State Street, proposed manager Wesley DeSantis. And I see we have somebody here, hi. Uh -huh. Two days in one week. How are you? Fine, thank you. So I'm sorry that my name says Catherine K, but I'm using my wife's computer. So, um, so I'm Rich Cooper. I own Cooper's and State Street. Um, I live on 136 South Main Street in Florence. Um, so these are two longtime employees. Um, Wesley at State Street has been with me for 17 years. Michael Fignolo has been with me for um, over 10 years. Um, each of them uh, essentially run the operations at the two locations. And it just makes sense since they're on the floor, training employees, um, meeting with customers, meeting with salespeople, that they be the managers. Great, yeah, going through the uh, paperwork, I saw their pictures on their IDs that they had to present. And I said, oh, it's these two. <laughs> been around forever. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah. they're, both, they're both obviously um, BAT trained Yep. Um, as well as the staff. So. 
Yep. Great. I mean, I have your application was totally thorough. And like I said, they're they're uh, they've been around forever and I, I have no further questions. Does Helen have any questions? I do not. No, nope. okay. all complete. So did you have anything else you wanted to offer, Rich? Or no, I don't. Thank okay. you very much. Sure. Then um, Helen, do you want to make this motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the applications for change of manager and to all alcohol package store licenses as detailed in item four of the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music at 274 Main Street. They are looking for wine and malt and request a fee waiver for the following dates, April 11th, 2022 from 7 to 11 for Tommy Emmanuel, April 13th for the Cowboy Junkies, April 16th for Godspeed You, Black Emperor, uh, April 22nd for Amy Mann, April 26th for the Zombies, and April 23rd for Ben de la Creme. And, and removing hot tuna. And we are removing hot tuna from April 28th. Hi, Melissa. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Is there anything different this month? Nothing's different. All right. Then I, Helen, do you have any questions no. for Melissa? Okay. <laughs> then I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short term liquor licenses as outlined in agenda item number five, as well as approve the fee waiver. Second. Thank you. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, guys. All right. Item number six, applications for short-term liquor licenses for Drawing Board Brewing Company at 36 Main Street in Florence for wine and malt on April 16th from 12 to 10 for pints on the patio and April 30th from 12 to 10 for pints on the patio. And do we have somebody here from Drawing Board? Don't see them. Corey? No Corey? Okay, I don't see him. Yeah, I don't either. All right, hopefully he'll pop up. So we will set that aside for now and move on to item number is seven, application for farm winery liquor license to sell at farmer's markets and agricultural events for Ragged Hill Cider Company out of West Brookfield, Mass. Tuesdays, April 19th, 2022 through November 8th, 2022 from 1.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Tuesday Farmers Market. And before we hear from the applicant, Helen. Yes, I just need to state for the record that um, I have um, submitted a disclosure statement uh, that's been signed off for the mayor because um, I am employed by Grow Food in Northampton and Grow Food Northampton runs the Tuesday farmers market. I am the farmers market manager, um, but so but we've signed all the paperwork, which allows me to go ahead and vote on this uh, application. Great, thank you for doing that. Is somebody here from Ragged Hill? Yes. Hello, I'm how Amy. are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Can you state your name for the record? Or I'm Ann Garwood Hamp. I'm one of the owners of Ragged Hill Cider Company. Um, we're an orchard based hard cider maker. We grow all the fruit that we press for our cider. Um, we've been so kindly invited to attend the Tuesday markets in Northampton this year. Um, we've been doing various markets throughout the state um, for the last five years. So this is something I'm very familiar with. Um, and we're looking forward to being part of the community. Great. Um, Helen, do you have questions? You probably. No, it's nice to meet you, Anne. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll be seeing you in person soon. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't have, um, I don't have any questions for you. Um, I have one question. I, in light of COVID, um, we used to, um, sample at the markets, um, at the end of last year, many of the markets started sampling again. I just wanted to find out um, what's what's the board's opinion and decision on that portion. Um, that I believe would be up to the grow food folks. Okay, great. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to state it here, but as far as I understand, the the Northampton 
health department has no COVID restrictions on the outdoor market this year. Okay. I know the MDAR has approved it, but I just wanted to find out from the local yeah. level. Okay, great. Great. Sure. Um, I will make a motion then to approve the application for the farm and winery liquor license to sell at farmers markets and agriculture events as outlined in agenda item number seven. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank great. you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. Take care. Item number eight, application for a short-term liquor license for the trustees of Forbes Library, DBA Forbes Library 20 West Street on May 14th, 2022 from four to 5.30 PM. This is for the trustees award reception in the Hosmer Gallery and they are seeking an all alcohol um, short-term license. Is someone here? Hi. Hi, uh, yes, my name is Lisa Downing and I'm the director of the Forbes Library. And um, we haven't come before you in quite a while because of COVID um, delays and restrictions and things like that. But at this point, this is, um, we'd like to hold this trustees award ceremony and have a reception in the gallery um, that will have um, uh, probably just wine actually at, at the end of the day to, um, uh, from four to 5.30 in the Hosmer gallery. Annie, do we need to make any adjustments if they're planning on just wine? Um, no, um, no, no. Okay. Um, and, and sorry, uh, did, uh, Lisa, did you request a fee waiver? Yes, yes, I did. I, sorry, I forgot to mention that. And we, and I request a fee waiver, please. Yeah. And I, I think I forgot to put it on the agenda, but, yeah. okay. um, if we could just include that. And then in that case, it wouldn't matter if it's all alcohol because wine falls under that. Okay. Perfect. And your setup will be the same as years past? Yes, um, we set up in the in the back of the gallery um, and we have our serve safe certified staff member on site uh, during the event. Okay, great. Helen, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I can make a motion if you'd like. Wonderful, thanks. Um, uh, make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license um, by the trustees of Forbes Library as detailed in item eight of the agenda uh, and uh, also approve the fee waiver. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Have fun with the event. Congratulations, it's happening. Okay, I think Corey came in. Um, let's scoot back to agenda item six for drawing board. Hi, Corey. Hey, sorry for my tardiness. We had a building inspection today and just got a little uh, confused. Got to get it done. Right. Totally fine. Um, so I'm just going to reread the agenda item for number six, application for short-term liquor license for drawing board brewing company at 36 Main Street for April 16th and April 30th from 12 to 10 for pints on the patio both days. Um, is this your usual thing that you've been? Exact, exact same thing, uh, no changes at all. Okay, great. Then I have no questions. How about you, Helen? I have no questions. Then I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda item number six. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Corey. Okay, thank you. All right, and that brings us to number nine, applications for short-term liquor licenses for Building 8 Brewing at 320 Riverside Drive for wine and malt on the following dates, April 8th and 9th from 6 to 11 p.m. At, for arts and music at Bombix at 130 Pine Street in Florence, April 14th from 7 to 11, live music at Bombix, 130 Pine Street, Florence, and May 8th, 7 to 11 live music at Bombex. Is O'Brien here? Annie, have you seen him? I don't see him. Then we'll put that on hold. Agenda item number 10, application for short-term liquor license for the Northampton Center for the Arts Incorporated, Saturday, April 30th, 2022, from 7.30 to 12.30 a.m. 
for Revelry at 33, a fundraiser for the Northampton Center for the Arts. They're requesting an all alcohol as well as a fee waiver. And do we have somebody here from Holly Street? Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks. Can you just state your name for us? Joanna Walker. Nice to see you. And you want to let us know a little bit about your event on the 30th? Sure. Um, it's a fundraiser for the center. Um, we want to serve beer, wine, and a few selected cocktails. Um, we actually just lined up Majestic Bar to serve for us, which is different than what's on the application. We had I had put our two tips trained staff members on there, but um, we actually want to hire outside bartenders to do it. Um, and it's just gonna be a party. We'll have a band, we'll have a, a second part of the evening with a DJ who's one of our board members and selling tickets to the public and hope it will be a success. Great. And it'll be inside. Inside in the flex space and the lobby and the mezzanine. Yep. Okay. And Annie, do they have to make any changes to their application if they're using a different? No, you, you, you still have to get your alcohol from a distributor. Yeah, I know okay. that. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no other changes to your setup or anything, then I don't have further questions. Do you, Helen? Nor do I. Nope. Do you see the, the fee waiver part? It was written on the application. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have. Uh, yep. So we want, I can go ahead and make a, I'll make a motion to approve um, the application for a short term liquor license by Northampton Center for the Arts, along with the requested fee waiver as detailed in item 10 on the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. Has O'Brien popped up? I haven't seen him yet. Okay. And um, then we are going to dive into agenda item number 11. These are the applications for outdoor dining extensions into public spaces. Um, we have quite a few of you, so we're just going to go one at a time. Um, starting with Zingara Limited, DBA Packards at 14 Masonic Street. And you were looking to do what you did last year, and that is 396 square feet in two parking spots directly in front of the restaurant. And do we have Bob here? There he is. Oh, well, Bob, you're muted. Are you able to text him, Annie? Um, I asked him to unmute, There's a, okay. but I can't unmute him, unfortunately. Okay. He's getting some help, I think. Oh, oh. There, there we go. go. Okay. How are Thank you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm computer inept. I'm sorry. You're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're basically the same thing as last year. I am going to be adding some video surveillance to the outside for my safety and my customers. Um, just because of what's going on in the world today, I think they'd feel more comfortable uh, if they knew that we had a, a protective eye on them okay. uh, to eliminate anything that might occur outside. But uh, that is, you know, part of our, uh, our purview to take care of the customers right until they get into their car. So that's the only that's the only change. And I'd just like to say. <clears throat> Thank you to the city for allowing us to do this again. This is great. Good. Good. Well, it's, I'm glad we can do it. Um, I don't have any questions for you if you're doing exactly the same thing. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay. Do you want to make this first big motion? Sure. I will make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Zingara Limited as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include two parking spaces directly in front of the restaurant, totaling 396 square feet, cordoned off by Jersey barriers, to be placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited, to include the sidewalk in between <laughs> limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages, 
only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m., is that correct? And the contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Aye. Yes. Second. Okay. Natasha, you seconded? I did second. Okay. Um, Natasha. Yes. <laughs> and Helen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Good luck. Thank you for your time. Yes, good thing. Um, Next up is uh, MP Majestic Enterprises, LLC, DBA Majestic Saloon, 24 Main Street. And this is for two parking spots on Main Street in front of Majestic. So who do we have? I'm here. And Hi I'm there, too. And Kayla's here somewhere, too. Great. I, I, I see both your squares. Can you guys just state your names, please? I'm Phil Peak. And I'm Kayla Manzi. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And this is um, your first year out. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what your plans are? Yeah, um, we've been working hard on a menu. Um, we're going to open for lunch. Um, we're aiming to do um, service outside from 12 to 10 p.m. Um, we're looking at a um, gourmet hot dog menu with some cold appetizers. Um, and yeah, we did want to sell alcohol outside as well. So um, just the hard stop at 10 o'clock for noise. Um, but other than that, it's looking like it's going to be some fun. Okay. And you have that, you have the big um, obstacle in front of you to work around. Yes. Okay. The rail, the rail, yeah. But the rail ends, and I think that's where the entrance is going to be, um, especially on weekends. It might get a little hectic out there. So thinking of having a host um, out there as well, kind of directing people that could also double as like a door person. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, pushing, making the service go that way and around the, um, instead of being able to go straight out front. Right. <clears throat> okay. Helen, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Then I will, um, if you, do you have anything, any other information, Kayla? Um, no, I think that's it. There's not going to be any entertainment outside. It's just going to be um, food and drinks out yep. there and expanding our hours. Okay. Phil, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, we, we may, the drawing that you have, we, we will probably modify that layout just a little bit because once they put the barriers down, we don't have as much yeah. width as we thought we were going to have. So the the layer of tables you see lining close to the sidewalk will probably be removed. Okay. So have, did you, so at first the barriers were wrong. Did you see that they were fixed today? Oh, I didn't know. I haven't been there today, no. Okay, so they I'll, were I'll, fixed this morning. Okay, I will um, look at that. the DPW placed them in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, so that should, it was, they were skinnier than they should have been. Okay. So we um, may not have to make that adjustment. Yeah, and that's fine. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever works. We'll let Kayla figure that out. So. Um, I did have a question though, and I feel like I may have overlooked this um, info on, I'm, I'm just, I think it's just easier if I ask, so I'm sorry if this is redundant, but um, for COVID restrictions, is it still six feet? The tables have to be six feet? No, so there's no COVID restrictions at all. Okay, so perfect. You, just, you do just have to get an inspection by the building department so they can um, just make sure their ADA access is maintained. But that's it. Gotcha. Okay, thank you so much. Thank and you. Now I have a question, Annie. So for um, drawing some floor plans that they submit with the number of seats and tables, if that goes up, do they have to come back to us, notify you with a new plan? Um, no, essentially you're just approving the space okay um and whatever works in the space whatever works for them okay yeah. great um i don't have anything else helen are you ready for a motion i'll do this one sure i'm ready <laughs> all right All-ears. okay then i'm going to make a motion to approve the extension of premises for mp majestic enterprises llc as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include two parking spaces directly in front of the restaurant totaling 320 square feet cordoned off by jersey barriers to be placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between 
limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from noon until 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Second. Great. Thank you. Then Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Next up, we have Wine Witch LLC at 159 Main Street, and this is for three tables on the sidewalk. And do we have someone from Wine Witch? I saw Dave. I thought I saw him. All right, we'll just... He also put something in the chat about not having audio. So I actually don't see him anymore, so. Okay, well, we'll put that on hold. Then we will move on to Lanran LLC, DBA, The Dirty Truth at 29 Main Street. And this is for sidewalk and one and a half parking spots on Main Street. And do we have somebody from The Dirty Truth? Yep. Kyle, Kyle here. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. What's your last name, Kyle? Anderson. Anderson, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are doing the same thing that you did last year? Uh, essentially, um, we are changing out a few of the tables for smaller uh, two-person tables, um, but the floor plan is exactly the same. Okay, great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions for Kyle? I don't. It went well last year, so I expect yeah. the same will happen this year. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. I have nothing further. Um, do you want to take this one, Helen? Sure. I will find it on my spreadsheet. Okay, I, I will make a motion okay. to <laughs> approve um, the extension of premises for Land Ram LLC DBA Dirty Truth as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include the sidewalk in front of the restaurant and space in Main Street cordoned off by Jersey barriers placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, Tuesday through Saturday from 12 p.m. to oops, um, 11 p.m. Uh, am I doing that? And, and Mondays, sorry, and Mondays from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Yep. and contingent, did I get that right? And contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I'll second. <laughs> Great, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, Kyle, good luck. Have and, a good one, bye. Uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Excellent. And Dave's not back. So we will go on to Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated, DBA Sylvester's Restaurant, 111 Pleasant Street. And this is for two parking spots in front of Sylvester's, um, down from four last year. And hello. Shalene Ducloth, I'm the manager of Sylvester's. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, you wanna let us know about your plans this year since they're a little bit different? Sure. Uh, so same type of tables. We're going to have uh, just half the capacity this year to get through the summer. Uh, so we'll have four square tables that seat four persons each for a capacity of 16, um, just to keep it more reasonable for our staff throughout the summer. Right. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I do not. All right. Then I don't have any further questions. So I will make the motion to approve the extension of premises for Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated DBA Sylvester's Restaurant as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include two parking spots cordoned off by Jersey barriers to be placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022. Thursday through Monday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building inspector prior to operation. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank Perfect. you so much. Thank you. Good luck. 
Next up, we have Amanu Cafe at 44 Main Street. And this is for one and a half parking spots on Lower Main, the same as last year. And do we have anybody from Amanu? Thought we did. Nope. All right, then we will move on to very limited DBA, Fitzwillie's Toasted Owl at 23 Main Street. Two parking spaces cordoned off by Jersey Barrier, same as last year. And I see Fred, hello. Can you just state the name for the record? Uh, very limited ink, DBA, Fitzwillie's, and the Toasted Owl. All right, thank you for coming. And again, same as last year. Um, yep. So two parking spots on Main Street. We all, we prior to COVID had the extension of premises for the sidewalk. So we have tables on the sidewalk as well. Yep. Uh, and then we have the tent in the parking lot, which I think is a separate, agenda, separate um, yeah. item on the agenda. I don't know if you can hear it all at the same time now or not, but that's gonna be exactly the same as last year as well. Annie, can we hear it all at the same time? Or do you uh, wanna keep it I mean, you can hear from Fred all at the same time and just do his, do his um, vote on it when we get there. If, if you're okay with him not being here, it's fine with okay. you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that, if you're okay with that, Fred. Yeah. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so do you just want to let us know again what you're up to in the parking lot? Yeah, so same as last year, it's a 40 foot by 50 foot tent, mm -hmm. um, seats about 60 people. Um, servers go in and out to the tent through the side door out of the Toasted Owl, um, so that there's no liquor being transported uh, on that section of the sidewalk that's not covered by the license. Yeah. Uh, um, but other than that, we do the full menu. We open it for lunch at 11.30 and, you know, serve until, um, you know, we're saying midnight. Most nights it's earlier than that, but okay. um, certainly no later. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I do not. All right. Do you want to take this one? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for very limited DBA Fitzwillie's Toasted Owl as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include two parking spaces on Lower Main Street to be cordoned off by Jersey barriers placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022 seven days a week from 11.30 a.m. to midnight and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Except you, you did say excluding the sidewalk, but the sidewalk is licensed. That's, so yeah, that's already, that's a permanent extension, Fred. So that's already included. So you okay. can set that up whenever. Right, but, but, but by excluding it in this, it doesn't. It, it's already, it's a permanent okay. extension. So okay. it's, you already have it, yeah. Very good, thank you. All right. Thank you. I'll second Thanks that. For everything. Okay. And yeah. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Has uh, Dave come back? Oh, there he is. Sorry. Are. are you guys talking to me? We are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I finally, you don't have, you have no idea. I had to drive from the restaurant back home to get this to work because I could, oh, not no. get, could not get audio on the iPad. Oh no, well, thank you for doing that. So we are ready for you. I'm just gonna reread this. This is for Wine Witch LLC at 159 Main Street for three tables on the sidewalk. That's correct. Um, and can you just state your name for us? Yes, David Greenman. G-R-E-E-M-A-N. Thank you. And um, so is so these three tables, are they going directly in front of yes. your window? Okay. Yeah, I just like triple checked that they would fit. And while it's tight, they will fit. Okay. It'll I know we initially tight. thought maybe the bank or, and I know the, uh, the salon next to us, you know, had no problem with us infringing a little bit, but it does not look like we have to. Okay. If that happens, it would be good to have something in writing from yes. whoever you're stepping on. Okay. Um, Helen, do you, what questions do you have, if any? I do not have any questions. All right. 
then um, I have a question. Yep. Um, how are you going to delineate the space? Just because it's not in the street, so there's no barrier. So I just want to know what the yeah. We're gonna get um, sort of like the the red carpet rope style thing and put it around where the tables are, and the entrance to the restaurant is right next to the the third of the three or the first of the three, however you want to look at it. And so that'll be the opening to get into the area. Yep. And there should be enough room there to for the sidewalk to remain fully accessible. Right. We saw there was a right. It's a five foot, uh, and I think we're actually leaving more than more than five and a half feet for the sidewalk. Okay. Are you all set with that, Annie? I am. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, I don't have any other questions. And Helen, if you're all set, then mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Um, to I move to approve the extension of premises for Winewich LLC as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include three tables and 15 chairs in front of the restaurant to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 1st, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 11.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. All right, great. Thank you for making the effort to- <laughs> Thank you, I'm gonna leave the meeting and drive back to the restaurant. Great, excellent, <laughs> good night. Um, has Amanu arrived? Nope. All right. Then we will move on to Veracruz Foods Incorporated, DBA, La Veracruzana. Uh, this is for one and a half parking spaces cordoned off by Jersey Barriers. Um, and I understand there won't be a tent this year. Okay. Is someone here from Veracruz? Hi. Hi. Good. So, Sunya Hood. Thank you for coming. Yep, thank you. Thank you for everything. And it is great um, to have this back. Yeah, it's it, it's fun to see happening downtown. Yeah, it, it, but it, it also helps in a very financial way yeah. for everyone. So I appreciate that. Great. Um, the same deal, minus a tent. It looks like we have, it could have been that last year. I don't know. Um, Annie, you could tell me. It looked like we had two two spaces last time, but maybe not. And so if we went down to one and a half from two, we'll just make the tables work um, or take away one of the smaller tables, if that's the case. I don't know if it is, um, but otherwise it's gonna be just the same, minus the tent, no tent. Right. Yeah, so it was three, la uh, you and Dirty Truth split three last year. Okay, so it was the same. And so it's the same, yeah. Okay, and then the, uh, only question I have is for the building inspection. So I have an employee who's been there forever. His name is Modesto and he's very, he does things. Just, he just does things. So when he saw the barriers go out, he put the tables out, which I understand um, he should not have done yet. So my question is, do we ask the, for inspectors to come or are they just making their rounds on one day or we need to be set up before they come? Is that the correct statement? Yes, you need to be set up before they come um, so they can just look at it yep. and you have to call, you have to call them, but they usually can come out that day. Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll let Modesto finish setting up and then we'll give him a call. Okay. Okay. But otherwise I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Helen, do you have anything? I don't. Okay. Not. Want to make this one? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Veracruz Foods, Inc., DBA, La Veracruzana, as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include one and a half parking spaces on Main Street cordoned off by Jersey barriers to be placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. A second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great, thank okay. you. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Next up, we have Wash It and Wear Incorporated, DBA Jake's Restaurant at 17 King Street. And this is Here. for approximately 130 square feet of sidewalk. Hello. Hello. Can you let Hi. us know your name? Yeah, uh, Alexander Wash It. Great. Thank you. And uh, this is basically the same as last year? Yes, it is. Okay. And do you have, um, just because you are right up against King Street, is there anything between the people and the stuff driving by? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, we have uh, like fencing. Okay. Sand uh, bases, oh, okay. pretty heavy duty plastic fencing with sands. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Helen, do you have questions for Jake? No. All right. I don't either. Do you have anything else you wanted to add, Alex? Uh, no, no. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Then I'll go ahead and make the motion. I move to approve the extension of premises for Wash It and Wear Incorporated DBA Jake's Restaurant as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include approximately 130 square feet on the sidewalk to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Did, did Natasha second? I mean, Helen second. Yes, yeah, second. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Right. Um, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sure thing. And do we have Amanu yet? Nope. All right, moving on then to Azad Barat Incorporated, DBA India House at 45 State Street. And this is uh, for three parking spots on State Street, same as last year. Do we have someone? Hi. Good evening. How are you? Good, and you? Good, thanks. And what is your name for the record? Um, I'm at Kanoja. Great, thanks for coming. Um, do you just want to let us know a little bit what you're doing? Yeah, so it's pretty much going to be the same as last year, um, yep. except last year last year we had put a we had um, bought like a, we had to put a little structure over it to cover it. This year we're not. We're just going to use um, uh, umbrellas, and they're going to be held down by weighted umbrella stands. Mm -hmm. We'll put up some uh, potted plants and try to make a little bit of a wall to keep customers separated from the street just to give them some privacy but it will be completely visible to us from inside so everything will be covered and monitored great helen do you have any questions or comments nope <laughs> now i did have a question for you guys when you guys say ada accessibility um so last year for example uh it was you know there was like a step up which anybody had to go like yeah. is does that still doable or do we need to put some kind of like a because the rest of our patio seating is all on the street level. So, I mean, if there is somebody ADA, um, there's the entrances are wide enough and everything for them to be yeah. seated. Yeah, when we've been mentioning it, we're referring to this actual sidewalk. Okay. The tables are on the sidewalk. The parking spots are, have been a different thing. And I actually don't know yeah. if if there have been issues for restaurants with that. Right. No, there wasn't any last year, but I just, okay. I just, you know, yeah. um, you mentioned a few times, so I just wanted to know if anything changed. Yep. Nope. I think you're good. That was just in reference to sidewalks. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Helen, do you want to make that motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Azad Bharat Inc. Uh, Inc. DBA India House as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include approximately three parking spots on State Street directly in front of the restaurant to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverage, beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I will second. And Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. May I ask you one more question? It says sure. from four to close. Um, if on like a special occasion, if we wanted to open like a couple of hours earlier, do we have to come back to you guys or notify you? Like suppose if we did like a, a lunch thing or something, you know, um, would we have to come back to you guys for service of the alcoholic beverage? Good question. Yes. Um, so I suggest doing it now. Okay. Um, could we then? Is yeah, that something we can do right now? 
Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be obliged if we just extend, if we change the yeah. motion, and extend the hours. Please, okay. you know, if we could do it from noon to the closing 10, it'd be fine, um, okay. just in case, you know. Okay. Sorry, I should have paid attention to that earlier, but thank you. Is that an amendment then to this motion? Yeah, so someone needs to make a motion to amend it. Okay, then I will make a motion to amend the motion um, for the hours for India House, making a change from 4 to 10 p.m. to noon to 10 p.m. Please. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Amanu still not here. Um, all right, so we're going to move right along. O'Brien hasn't popped in either, has he? I haven't seen him. Okay. Then we're going to move on to agenda item number 12, applications for outdoor dining extensions into private property. And we will start with Lilo Incorporated, DBA East Side Grill at 19 Strong Ave. And this is for the private alleyway slash driveway. Hi, Deb. You're muted. Okay. Okay. okay, 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 okay. There you are. <laughs> oh, I'm having problems with my video. Okay. Uh, so the alleyway is exact from last year. Okay. Can you hear us okay? Can you hear me okay? Yep, we yep. can hear you. A little half away, so you can turn one off. Oh, oh. okay. How about now? <laughs> Sorry about that. Having a little problems with my computer. It's okay. We'll all get it eventually. Um, um, so my, my alleyway is the exact same as it was last year. Okay. Um, so you don't have any plans for no changes to your service? None. Okay. Uh, Helen, do you have any questions for Deb? I don't. Okay. I have no questions for Deb. So I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to um, approve the extension of premises for Lilo Incorporated DBA Eastside Grill as shown on plan on file with the License Commission for the purposes of summer on. Oh, no, that's not it. Is that we're not doing oh, summer strong right no, now? No, not yet. All right. And Helen, can you take this one? Because on my giant spreadsheet, I've lost it. Yeah. So where am I looking on this giant spreadsheet? Is it? <laughs> oh, purple. we're purple. Oh, oh, so it's below the. Yep. Oh, wait, I found it. I got it. Okay. Okay. I move to approve the extension for premises for Lilo Incorporated DBA Eastside Grill as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include the private driveway alley on, si on the side of Eastside Grill from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 5 to 9 p.m. Fridays from 5 to 10 p.m. and Saturdays from 4 to 10 p.m. and Sundays from 2 to 8 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection of the building department prior to operation. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. All right. Next up, we have Rias Bashas LLC, DBA Homestead, 7 Strong Avenue. This is for the back patio, approximately 600 square feet. Um, is Jeremy here? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, how are you? How's everyone doing? Good. Can you just state your name? I don't think I had dubbed you that, but... Yeah, uh, I'm Jeremy Werther, uh, owner and chef at Homestead, Respectious LLC, uh, going for our back patio application. Um, right now, the plan is to utilize it as we applied for, which is the uh, essentially the same as last year. It is the same same exact space, slightly different table setup we're trying, mm -hmm. uh, again, without the COVID uh, six foot regulations, um, but it will be the same space with the same uh, roped off section. Um, so that's the initial plan. And then we've actually been working on a new plan, which will lead to some questions, but I figured I'd let you guys ask any questions you might have first before I jump into my questions there. Okay. Did you, were you open until 1 a.m.? Back there last we year? were not no we uh i think we just um we had, we've talked about on and off 
uh, the possibility of turning it into almost like a lounge, um, you know, for an hour or so after service, uh, you know, I, I would, of course, would be in control of our of our noise um, and keep everyone, you know, safe. I would just I just put the extended hours there in terms you know, to try and hopefully uh, utilize some time, uh, create some more revenue for the business. Yep. Okay. Helen, did you have any questions before Jeremy's questions? No. Are your questions related to this, to your, the patio? Yeah, they're, re yeah, they're related to the patio. Um, our, our realistically this year with Summer on Strong uh, coming back together, we don't foresee the ability to uh, staff both sections of the outdoor dining. Um, so we've been discussing possibly turning the back patio into essentially a three night a week barbecue, um, where again, I have, I have more research to do, but I figured I'd see if I need to send a new app application through for this or not. Um, but we, we would essentially create a separate section of the restaurant uh, where we would have uh, beer and wine uh, options and then, you know, set up a grill and just do, uh, you know, pieces of meat and grilled vegetables, you know, totally different kind of vibe um, than what we have inside, but would allow us to utilize the space without totally interact, interfering with our indoor service uh, and, and front street service. So I, I guess my question is more, is this something I would need to refile a different application for, even though it's the same space? Um, obviously I need to touch base with the Board of Health and see on, from their perspectives on, on if that is uh, feasible or legal for us to do. Um, but I wanted to touch base since I'm here now and it's something that we just started talking about in the last couple of days, um, seeing if I would need to refile an application or if because it is the same space, it would just be good and clear to go from your perspectives. I think it'd be good to go, wouldn't they, okay. Annie? If it's, just, I mean, yeah, it's like hours. Yeah, since you're you're really licensing the space, right? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't see you needing a new application, but maybe when you finalize your plan, do you mind just giving me a call and letting me know? Sure. And, okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I just have a question related to that because you were saying that you would have staffing issues with the, you know, the front area with the summer on yeah. strong and the back area. And I guess I'm confused as how this is alleviating that. Are they? Well, so it's, nice it's less that? about, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's, it's yeah. less about um, the physical bodies and more about the way our, our, uh, mm -hmm. the flow of our service runs. Um, you know, there was last year with uh, people seated doing full dining in the back and in the front, it creates, you know, a little bit of a safety bottleneck in terms of going in and out uh, to get to that back space. But as this would essentially be a separate, um, it would essentially be a separate service. So it wouldn't interfere with, uh, with our internal staff. So we'd essentially have two staffs on, on, uh, on duty those days, one that's focused on the back patio barbecue and one that's doing our indoor and front uh, front street parking. So it's not so much a labor issue per se as just trying to be safer about how we're going past each other and getting food to and from uh, the people in the different patio sections. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that Absolutely. you're thinking about that too. So. Great. Um, Helen, do you want to take this motion? Yes, once I find <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Here we go. Okay, I make a motion to approve uh, the extension of premises for Rio Spacious LLC DBA homestead as shown on plan on file with license commission to include back patio approximately 600 square feet, also to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from uh, April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 20. 22 from 2 p.m. to 1 a.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I will second. Um, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Sorry, one thing in that motion, Jeremy, they don't need, you don't need to use yeah. the sidewalk, do you? Oh, yeah. Not, not for this portion. The sidewalk becomes a, a summer on strong right, right, uh, okay. piece, which I know we'll talk about in a few minutes. It's, it's fine. I just wanted to make it clear. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was now, this reading is, for my script. So. Yeah, I'm actually outside <laughs> the back door of the restaurant. So this is would be the entrance and exit point for that back patio. You don't cross the, the sidewalk at all. Okay. 
do I need, we don't need to redo it, right? Yeah, it's fine. Then right. we'll move on to very limited DBA Fitzwillies toasted owl 23 Main Street. This is uh, for the 2000 square feet in the private parking lot, which um, we already talked about with Fred. Um, so Helen, do you have any, you don't need to discuss that further? No. Okay, then I will make the motion to approve the extension of premises for a very limited DBA Fitzwillies toasted owl as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include adjacent private parking lot of approximately 2000 square feet and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022 from 1130 AM to midnight and contingent upon site inspection um, of the building department prior to operation. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Yes, sorry, did I say yes? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it together. Okay, One Bridge Street Incorporated, DBA Spoleto, One Bridge Street. This is for the parking lot. Do we have anybody from Spoleto? Hello. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Sophia Robon. I am the general manager at Spoleto. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, so what we're asking for is just the same space that we've had in our patio the last couple of years. Um, we have the upper bar area with the high tops and then the pebbled area with the picnic tables. And there's going to be a tent there as well. It has not gone up yet, though. OK. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? No. No. All right. Then I will go ahead and make a motion to approve the extension of premises for One Bridge Street Incorporated, DBA Spoleto, as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include the entire adjacent private parking lot to include 34 tables and 156 chairs to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022 from 4 p.m. to midnight and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay, Masa Mexicano LLC, 176 Pine Street. This is for approximately 1800 square feet of space in the private parking lot. Do we have somebody from Masa? Yep, I'm Hello, here. Who are you? Now by yourself? Good, thanks. Can you just state your name for us? Roberto Sarabia. Great. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing as last year. Um, okay. same. Everything's staying the same. I'm planning to put in the same like barricades up and stuff like that, just so it's visible for um, cars. Yep. 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 I lived down the street and have spent time in that parking lot eating your fine food and felt very safe. Oh, great. Cars. <laughs> Um, I don't have any questions. Helen, do you have any questions? I do not. All right. Do you want to take this motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Masa Mexicano LLC as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include approximately 1800 square feet of the parking lot area directly in front of the restaurant to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of, or I guess to include the parking lot in between. Um, limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022 from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. All right, I haven't seen any of our other folks that we've been missing, so I'll just keep going. We are now on item 13, application for transfer of entertainment license, transfer from Lilo Incorporated DBA Eastside Grill, transfer to Icor LLC DBA Familiars Coffee and Tea. This is for live music on Wednesdays, 5 to 8 p.m., Thursdays, 5 to 8 p.m., Sundays, 3 to 6 p.m., May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022. And this is simply for the transferred transfer because Familiars is now taking the lead of the event. 
and we have somebody here from Familiars. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. This is um, Isaac Weiner, owner at Familiars. Great, thank you. Um, so you're just taking over the programming. Yeah, we're just um, moving the program from east side to Familiars, taking yep. kind of the lead and the main contact point of all of that. We're really doing the same thing as we did last year. So music three nights a week, ending it very early. Um, I don't think we had any problems with our neighbors last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so just kind of doing it again and also extending the dates for the permit um, because the city has allowed us to extend summer on strong. We need to increase the permit to go through that May and October. Sure. And have you, or do you have plans to notify the neighbors just that this is happening again and the extensions on either end? Um, so the neighbors are aware that Summer on Strong is happening. Um, they yeah. attended like a neighborhood meeting with all of us and we okay. talked about it and they are, are fully informed that this is happening. Okay, great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't. All right. Then I will make a motion to approve the... Um, transfer of the entertainment license from Eastside Grill to Familiar's Coffee and Tea as outlined in number 13. Second. And Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item number 14, applications for outdoor dining extensions for the purposes of summer on strong. Okay, so we're gonna start again with you, Isaac, because you're taking the lead on Summer on Strong. Um, we have, so we, we have you in here as an applicant, but we do have to approve it, Annie? No, I just included him because he, he's, he's the lead. So I figured you'd wanna, you'd wanna hear from him. And I mean, I, you gave me a few meetings back, you gave me approval to, um, you gave me permission to approve Common Vic extensions, which Familiars is. Right. Um, you don't need approval. For, we don't need to approve them. Okay. And we'll go straight to. But I didn't know if you wanted to speak with him because he's the lead of this year's um, summer on show. Um, no? I, don't, I don't have any questions for him about it. Do you, Helen? No, I don't think so. No. From an overall perspective, is there anything that you wanted to add, Isaac, about the event? I don't believe so. I do want to say thank you, obviously, for everyone who's made this possible. Um, I know it's a lot of work on um, your side of it and on everyone's side of it. So I do really thank you for letting us do it. I think it was great last year. Um, it was. I'm very excited to keep doing it. Um, and I'm, I think it's going to be a great time this year. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. It is, and the work was all on you guys. We just had some meetings <laughs> and you guys did the rest, but you really did create such a cool, um, fun thing for people to experience downtown, so. Thank you, I appreciate it. Very happy it's happening again. Second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lilo Incorporated, DBA Eastside Grill 19 Strong. Um, hello, Deb. Hello, Natasha. <laughs> you want to let us know what you're doing this year for Summer on Strong? Exactly the same thing from last year. Excellent. And um, will you have the same sort of plant setups happening around your space? Is that I, It's going to probably be even more so than last year. But okay. it, it, it'll be almost exactly like it, but just more. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions for Deb? No. Nope. You want to make this motion? I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for, the, sorry, do you say Lilo or Lilo? Lilo Inc.? It's Lilo. Lilo, thank you. Uh, Lilo Inc. DBA Eastside Grill, as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission for the purposes of Summer on Strong to include the sidewalk in between limited transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 5 to 9 p.m. Friday from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great, thank you, Deb. Thank you all very much for letting us do this again. We really appreciate it. It'll be fun, another fun year. 
Okay, Think Tank, DBA Progression Brewing Company at 9 Pearl Street. I am Drew Starkweather of Think Tank Brewers. Thank you. How for are you all? Good. Good. So um, what are your plans this year? Um, we're going to do the exact same thing we did last year, right mm -hmm. across from the east side, um, the tap wagon. Um, it's 10, 10 tables and a couple stand-up um, tables, so about 40 seats. Um, sounds like we're going to be getting some more planters, so the perimeter will be even tighter. Um, and um, so it will be very much identical to last year. Mm -hmm. Did you guys find you had to, to man be managing people a lot last year, weaving in and out of the different spaces? Um, a lot of people didn't understand the alcohol yeah. boundaries, you know, especially yep. us with it. We're just beer. We're not a you know, and um, so, but the staff did a great job just sort of saying, nope, <laughs> you can't right. leave with that. <laughs> right, right, right. You can bring your local burger down here, but you can't bring your beer down there. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I thought last year was fantastic and very appreciative with others that we get to do this again. So, great. Nice. Helen, do you have any questions or comments for Drew? No, it was great last year. I'm hoping that it'll be great again. All right, then I will make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Think Tank Brewers LLC DBA Progression Brewing Company as shown on plan on file with the License Commission for the purposes of Summer on Strong from May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022, Monday through Friday from 12 to 10 and contingent on site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Is there a Saturday or Sunday in there? Yeah, there's no, I was just, I'm looking at this and not oh. seeing one. What's the oh, story with that, Annie? Um, let me see. I may have messed up. We can amend it easily. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, I only saw on the application, it was only said Monday through Friday, 12 to 10. We could do Monday through Sunday. Um, we generally won't be open Mondays or Tuesdays, but since East Side's open on Mondays, um, we're looking at maybe being open for a bit on Mondays. Yep. Can we just make an amendment for that, Yanni? Um, yeah. So did we did we get a second on that? Yeah, I mean, is that should I do that or should it, is it still open and? Continue? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you can make you can make an amendment. So I should go ahead and second. That's the cleanest way. Um, Natasha should before you second. Okay, then I'm going okay. to make an amendment to the hours, days and hours portion of the motion and change it to May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022, Monday through Sunday from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. All right. Next up, Ria Spaishas again, LLC, DBA Homestead, 7 Strong Avenue. I'm back. Hello, you're back. So, back in the kitchen, that's it, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, do you have any any plans to change your uh, No, I'm, I'm going to be a broken record. It's the same as last year, three tables on the sidewalk in the, between 8 and 10 in the delegated space. Um, uh, again, just same as last year, maybe some better, uh, some better bearing, bearage marking due to the uh, planters increasing or possibly except other uh, things that we may add, but same as last year. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Would you like to make this motion? Make a motion to approve the extension of premises for Rias Bashas LLC DBA homestead as shown on the plan on file with the license commission for the purposes of summer on strong to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022 from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. A second. And Helen. Yes. And Natasha. Yes. It's so exciting to go first sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Local Burger Incorporated, 16 Main Street. Hello. 
Jeff and Mary from Local Burger. How's everybody doing? Good. Congratulations Good. on Calico. I'm sorry? Congratulations on Calico. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's going well so far. So it's, uh, it's uh, and so, so thank you very much. Super exciting. It's exciting, exciting thing. So, yeah. 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 So what are your plans for Summer on Strong? Uh, so same as last year. Um, I think it was eight tables, I believe. Um, six, four tops, two, two tops. Hours seven days a week from eleven thirty a.m. until ten p.m. Okay. And do you have plans to change how you're cordoning off your space, or you'll? So, yeah, you? basically, it's, uh, same as last year. We have a few planters, and uh, everything else the, the uh, city is supplying us. And, yep. uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Helen, do you have any uh, questions? No. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, sorry. Yeah, probably, again, a few more planters, planters, a few more flowers. I think we're going to do as well this year. So, okay. Yeah. Try I can't it. wait to see it. I thought it yeah, was yeah, so like it's, a well planted exciting. last yeah. year decorated. So it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It was, it was beautiful. So yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Yeah. Then um, I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for local Burger Incorporated as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission for the purposes of Summer on Strong to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 3rd, 2022 to October 10th, 2022 from 11.30 to 10 p.m., Monday through Friday, Sunday, and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Second. Very good. And Natasha? Yes. And Ellen? Yes. Great. All right, we have one thank, more. Thank you all very much. Really you. appreciate it. Sure thank, thing. Thank um, we have you and I incorporated DBA Moshi Moshi at 4 Main Street. And... Do we have Moshi Moshi here? We did, yes. Moshi Moshi. We do. Oh, is he coming back? I hope so. We can't hear you. There you go. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? I'm still working in the kitchen too. I see that you guys are all busy. We don't want to keep you. Um, yeah, can you, just, yes. can you let us know your name, please, for the record. My, my name is Seng Su Lee. Nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you. Um, so this is your first time for summer on strong, right? Yes. Oh, uh, the was the last year or two. Oh, were you out last year? Table last year? Okay. So uh, what's your what's your plan this year? I think this year we have the same setup, but uh, that I can have a couple more table, which is uh, I've application in only two tables in it but mm -hmm. i'm going to make a full table instead of two table great mm -hmm. helen do you have any questions yeah i'm just trying to understand the diagram so there there are parking there's area within the summer on strong as well as two parking spaces up front is that yeah, what it is that's... so yeah. as far as far as i understand it it's it's taking up the, the tables will take up a parking spot on strong Ave oh. within summer on strong. Oh, okay. It should be where the, like about the 15 minute spot is right now. Um, yeah. that, that's what he's going for. And then when it's summer on strong, it's, you kind of get a double wide. So you kind of end up with okay. that, that whole width of it. Okay. Thanks. That's what I meant. Okay. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Great. I have no further questions. Do you, Helen? I do not. You want to take this motion? Sure. I make a motion to approve the extension of premises for UNI Inc. DBA Moshi Moshi as shown on the plan on file with the license commission for the purposes of Summer on Strong to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 3rd, 2022 through October 10th, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Nice. Okay, I think thank you that- Thank very much. Thank you very much. I think that concludes the Summer on Strong piece. Was there anything <sighs> else for that, Yanni? No. Okay. No. Isaac, did you have anything else? No, just uh, reiterating how appreciative we are. Uh, we are that you're letting us do this and totally uh, very excited for it. So thank you. Nice. Good. Can't wait. 
All right, thank you guys. And I do see O'Brien. Yes, I here see it too. Has made it. All right, so we're gonna scoop back to agenda item number nine. Applications for short-term liquor licenses for Building 8 Brewing at 320 Riverside Drive for wine and malt for the following dates, April 8th and 9th, 2022, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Arts and Music at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence. And there was another one, right? Yes, and April 14th, 7 to 11 p.m. live music at Bombix at 130 Pine Street. And then finally, May 8th, 7 to 11 p.m. live music at Bombex, also at Pine Street. Hello. Hi, my apologies. I've had a run around day and I just, three kids okay. just, yeah. <laughs> Thank we'll you, Drew, done. for giving me the heads up. <laughs> we'll get it done. Um, do you have any, are there any changes to how you're running the beverages? Uh, no, we're, we're still in the same spot. Uh, Andy, I called your attention to a new serve safe number for me. Um, and um, other than that, it's uh, still progressing. We're still in, not in the uh, main performance venue, but just, just outside of it. And, um, you know, just, uh, just doing the thing. And it's been, you know, okay. It's been good at times, but, uh, you know, we're, you know, making sure we're selling seltzers and water as well and stuff like that. So, uh, just really trying to be a presence there and uh, just doing doing all right, you know. Uh, nothing, nothing to uh, uh, nothing to uh, to report really that's been any different or anything like that. So, okay, Helen, do you have any questions? No, no. All right, then I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses as outlined in agenda item number nine. Second. And Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. Thank you so much for making it. Sorry. I'm so sorry again. It's okay. <laughs> All right. here. Thank All you. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. -bye. And the only other one we we um, skipped over because he didn't show his Amanu's. Yep. Um, I can say that it's this, this, the plan is the same as it's been the last two years. Okay. Um, yeah. I, there was nothing different that I saw. Right, then we can we don't need him here to approve it, right? Right. Okay. Do you want to take that motion, Helen? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the extension of premises for uh, Amanu Cafe as shown on the plan on file with the license commission to include one and a half parking spaces on Lower Main Street to be cordoned off by Jersey barriers placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from April 5th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022, seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great, thank you. I'm glad we got, we were able to do that so we didn't need to scramble for a special meeting. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Um, okay, so that brings us to Item 15, discussion of a possible outdoor entertainment license. And we have this on the agenda because um, Helen, you shared with Annie the article from the Gazette mm -hmm. about just what East Hampton is doing with changes. And it's been an ongoing discussion for us in general. So um, if we wanna have that discussion now, we can do that or we can, I know the, the meeting, I mean, it's not as late as I thought it might be at this point, but um, yeah, yeah, I think we should, we can go ahead and discuss okay. it. Okay. Um, what are we discussing? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so there was the art, there was the just observing what area, other area communities are doing. And, um, you know, East Hampton and the article that you shared with Annie is right. changing or they're, they're developing a system where an applicant, anybody who has outdoor entertainment has to apply each time for an outdoor entertainment license and they have to pay each time for an outdoor entertainment license. Right. And since um, Annie and I met last week to review agenda items and got a little bit more information from attorney Seawald regarding some of what we've been struggling with in terms of noise complaints and Annie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, 
I mean, this sort of is in parallel to the license conversation, the outdoor entertainment conversation. Um, any noise complaints? We have we have zero purview over the noise complaints. None. <laughs> Anything should be directed to the building department, and that's that's the big clarification from from the information that we were getting a number of months ago regarding this doesn't fall under the zoning where that noise ordinance is. So we were sort of left like in in a gray area of not really knowing what that meant mm -hmm. and who was responsible since we're issuing these entertainment licenses then who's responsible for um, any complaints around the noise and the responsibility remains with the building department. So how does that play out exactly? So it would play out with um, calling the the police department with a noise complaint. And Annie, how did it, so I know with Majestic, the neighbor went directly to his city councilor and his city councilor went to the building department. Um, his, his, he went to his city councilor who, who told him to get in contact with me, who then I passed it along to the, either I passed it along to the building department or I brought it to a meeting and the commission instructed me to bring it to the building department. I, I don't remember. It would be in the minutes. I, I don't remember. Off okay. the of head. Well, I mean, I guess the, for clarification purposes, mm -hmm. my understanding is that we, we have no authority over noise complaints. Right, but I mean, is that an enforcement mechanism? Or noise I mean, because I know with Majestic, as, in, as in noise complaints, as in the for the ordinance, because the ordinance that you had sent, it's a it's a zoning ordinance. So the license commission can't get isn't involved in zoning matters. So that's strictly enforcement by the building department. But okay. There, but so they should okay because with the majestic thing I mean I know they came in front of us as well like we had one or two meetings where there was a discussion in front of us so I guess what I'm asking is the solicitor suggesting that when and if there's a noise complaint it goes to the police and then it, it is brought to the attention of the building department the building department department somehow has some kind of enforcement mechanism about it or you know is it just supposed to we we have washed our hands and we have these entertainment licenses and then whatever happens is now thrust onto someone else or another department is that what the suggestion is i'm what suggestion? I, I mean i guess uh, just that it's like it's the purview of the building department that noise complaints go to the building department does that then mean that once we've said okay to an entertainment license, if there's a problem with it, it's no longer our issue or it's, I mean, it still comes back to us because if there's yeah. complaints. I think the, the point of clarification that was helpful to me was in terms of the mechanism to determine what the problem is. We don't have any means as a license commission to do that other than they said they said in terms of it was too loud no it wasn't so and I, and I don't believe that the license commission should take upon themselves the mechanisms to determine that because that is just completely outside the scope of what we do whereas the building department they're the ones who have the um, weights and measures person to conduct the decibel counting which is what ultimately happened at majestic okay yeah that's so that that's like i i needed that type of clarification because we've struggled so much with how do we deal with this and so i needed to break it down in terms of well what do we need to what do we need to deal with what are we what is within the scope of our responsibility um and that's not to say that we shouldn't be responsible for what's happening with the licenses once they're issued I don't think that that's the case at all, but in terms of the enforcement, we don't have a basis to determine what's happening. Does that make sense? Sort of. I mean, I guess, um, and that, sorry if I'm being dense, because I feel, I thought I heard on the one hand, like 
that we can't reference that because that's for zoning it's not for entertainment with these decibel levels or is it just that because we have sort of referenced those decibel levels i mean or whether or not we have it is in place if there's a complaint they actually go and do the measurement i mean is that what you're saying and that information can then be brought back to us when there are complaints from the neighbors, I'm sorry if I'm mudding the waters. I, I'm just trying to figure out yeah. how this plays out in yeah. the situation that we know may come. No, I totally get it. I'm just looking for, I yeah. printed out. Annie, do you have handy? Oh, wait, okay. Um, yeah, so attorney Seawald said, the ordinance referenced is a zoning ordinance that can only be enforced by the building commissioner. This is not the standard that the license commission should apply. However, if there is a complaint, the complaint should be made to the building commissioner to enforce the decibel limits of the ordinance. Okay, is he saying, so I'm hearing two different things. One is that we should not, it says that we shouldn't reference it. What was the language? The license commission cannot. Shouldn't apply it as a standard. 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 We shouldn't apply it. And yet, if there is a noise complaint, it goes to the building department. And what yeah. I'm inferring from that, this is not the standard that the license commission should apply, is that we don't have any basis to apply anything. Okay. We don't, we're not decibel counters. We don't <laughs> okay. have that mechanism built into the structure of this commission. Okay. So then does this go back in a way to this, you know, I brought up the East Hampton um, mm -hmm. outdoor entertainment application where all they have is what well, seems to have little teeth, this good neighbor agreement. I mean, is yeah. that sort of the suggestion we can just say, please be kind to your neighbors and don't disturb them. And if you disturb one of them, you know, this can be reassessed. Um, is that sort of the limit? Is, a, is he suggesting that's the, kind of the limit of what we can do and any? I don't know that that's the can't apply. but I think because I don't think I, I don't think that you had talked to attorney Seawald about that aspect of it, Annie. No. I think, no. I think we should absolutely add to all of the entertainment licenses the good neighbor piece because it's it's if you're entertaining outside or if you're entertaining inside, there's the potential for people to be disturbed by it. Yeah. So I think it's not always enough to say, please be courteous and communicate and cooperate with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, because when it comes to a point of disagreement, that asking people to communicate and cooperate isn't helpful. It doesn't do anything. Having it written into the license, I think just sort of embeds it a little bit further right. that that expectation exists. Okay. Annie, what were you gonna say? Um, I think I was just gonna say that Yes, I, I hadn't talked to attorney Seawald about that, but the license commission can put in any standard rule or regulation that they'd like. Um, just because there is nothing now doesn't mean there has to be nothing. Um, but when it comes to the noise ordinance, that's not something that the license commission can reference. But if it wants to, have something, it would need to create something. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is where I get confused again. So meaning we could duplicate it basically say this is that we're gonna adopt that. We don't, I guess, reference it because technically we're not supposed to reference it, but we could, if we really wanted to put decibels on it. You could We could just repeat all that saying this now applies to entertainment licenses but then it goes back to, I guess, enforcement issues. It does it still then go back to the building department? Like, can we do that, A? And B, if we do, is it still the building department? I mean, it wouldn't be word for word right. because it's a zoning ordinance. And it wouldn't be an ordinance because then it'd have to go to city council. Um, it would be, it would you vote on it as a rule or regulation and we, it, we would put it into our rules um 
But then, yeah, I mean, I think that's what would have to be discussed with the enforcement. That's where I feel like we don't have any um, we don't have the means to if we if we don't have the means to enforce that. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody if we put decibels into our into our rules and regulations around it, we're not the ones going out and counting this. It just and it's I and I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little frustrated by the whole conversation because it's about one place. Right. You now this is about one place. Yeah. And I've been on license commission, I think six years now, and only one other time did this come up and it was with Majestic. And it was solved by a decibel counter being used because then it provided factual information that nobody could argue about. Mm -hmm. Nobody could say this is, you know, it's not, it's not an interpretation, it's actual fact. Um, and we don't have that purview to be requiring that of the building department which I, you know, it, which makes me a little bit hesitant about putting, um, applying new language to it. But okay, but even without that language, I know we're going around in circles, the neighbors could call the building department yep. and say, it is loud. I would like you to come out and do a measurement. And then they have information that they can share with the owner and say, this needs to be resolved. And then we know at some point it then comes back into our lap. Right. If it's but, not resolved, um, certainly yeah. then it then yeah. it should be. Then that that is where we can be active. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And this is not to say that the license commission doesn't have the ability to amend entertainment licenses. Mm -hmm. Right. And it does, and it's been done. And we've done it, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think every license says that on it, right? That the... I don't know if it says it on it, but it's... This body has that authority. I thought it said something about where, yeah, we can withdraw or amend this license if... So there's something on the license itself. I, I mean, I, I haven't memorized the license. I don't. Oh. <laughs> All the licenses you deal with? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'd have to look. And I'm, don't, I'm just on a laptop right now, not my computer. Yeah. My That's kind of and if we, to, to change or add language to the license itself, like the good neighbor language, um, or to make sure that this is on the license the, on the license itself that we have the right to amend it. Do we need to have public hearings to, to make those changes or it's only if we're actually changing regulations? A public hearing to make what changes? Changes to a license? To just the language we put on the licenses in terms of the good neighbor piece. Oh yeah, if you're gonna, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I would want to get clarification on that okay. before anything. Yeah. Because I think it, it's, we definitely want to, moving forward, have some way that that becomes an official part of the process is that that understanding is there. Okay. I will check on that. Yeah. So, and, and this, I mean, we've done the entertainment licenses for this year, right? This is something that we would or could we say that we are well, now? I could always, they could always be added and I can always amend the license and send it out. Okay. Um, and then there's the other question about, do we feel that it's necessary to do what East Hampton has done and make a separate outdoor entertainment license? Or do we feel that our general entertainment license is enough, especially if we had this good neighbor agreement? To what end would the, specific outdoor entertainment license be beneficial yeah i that's what i'm asking yeah I don't know that it would i think it, like maybe the more important piece is is um that's the explicit good neighbor agreement just to kind of emphasize it i mean right. although we may have some language in there already about disturbing the piece but 
I guess we should look at it and see if we need to add this. But yes, I think the indoor, the entertainment license we have, I yeah, I don't know that we need a separate one. Right. Yeah. Just and I wasn't like poking at that. I was just yeah. like, if there's a benefit, then we should discuss it. But if it only is just more paperwork, paperwork. and more <laughs> more fees because more paperwork requires more actual work. Right. For Annie, and that's where that's why we have fees with licenses. And I, I don't think it would be appropriate to. Yeah. Unless it's a, in the future, it's one entertainment license and you're checking a box indoor, outdoor. Right. And although, I mean, I guess in the description, right. Currently when the people were doing the outdoor entertainment licenses during the pandemic, it was just sort of written, I guess, in like paragraph form or something that that was going to happen on the I license. I mean, there's space no. to just explain that it's going to be outside. Is that how we've been doing it, Annie? Um, no, yeah, I, I would specify if it's outdoors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's helpful. I mean, if we're doing any amendments, if it's helpful to have boxes to check to say it's indoor and outdoor, but you know, but theoretically it wouldn't actually change anything. I mean, the fee would be the same and, and it right. wouldn't change anything. Yeah, I mean, I think in this age of, you know, that these outdoor licenses weren't really so much of a thing mm -hmm. before two years ago. So tight, like, tightening up the process and the expectations on all sides, I think is helpful and necessary. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have other thoughts about it that you wanted to to talk about? No, I mean, I mostly, you know, brought it to Annie's attention to pass on to you to just say yeah. that this is happening. So, because I know that East Hampton has been having issues as well, and this yep. seems to be the way that they're trying to resolve it. I'm, I'm curious if it will change anything for them. Right. Well, and, and will it? Um, will it become something they might regret, like with Montague? <laughs> <laughs> right yeah like is it is it going to fulfill their need is it going to meet their needs yeah that will remain to be seen right and i don't know that have they formally changed it yet it seemed that um it, it required a little uh, more steps or something oh, it says no uh, it's effect in the article it says that it's implementing an outdoor live entertainment license effective april 1st wow so all right Okay. Right. Do you, are you ready to move on to the next item or do you want to? Sure. Yeah, no, I think we've discussed. Okay. <laughs> so was there any? Any resolution out of that? Yeah, I mean, the only like, thing that, I mean, my takeaway is that I'm going to check on the, uh, how we go about adding good neighbor language. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and confirming that there's language existing on the license that makes it clear to the applicant that, or the licensee, that we can make amendments as, you know, if there's disturbances or whatever, or however, it's, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's on there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, then. Moving on to number 19, approval of minutes, March 2nd, 2022 and April 1st. Would you like to make a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the minutes of March 2nd, 2022 and April 1st, 2022. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Um, new business. Anything new? Did we include this the We did. Yep. Yeah, she threw it in there when I remember him her doing it. Yes. And Della Cram, how can you forget it? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now I remember. Yep. No, it's in there, and we took out the took out whatever the tuna one was. Hot tuna. Yeah. Tuna, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think you told me this recently, but uh, what's the timing, do we think, of a potential third license commissioner? 
Um, we're just waiting for the House has signed off on the legislation. We're waiting for the Senate to sign off and then the governor and yeah. Okay, so we don't really know the time frame. I mean, hopefully before the end of this year. <laughs> yes, yes, hopefully. Um, I can check in with the senator's office and see if there's any word. That would be good. And then we, there's, I mean, there's no one in the queue. Um, this isn't, this isn't a board and committee that people are chomping on the, at the bit to get on. So there's no, there's no one in line. I did mention it to the mayor yesterday. And so as she is thinking about it, um, Okay. Um, and then my other question, which I know you've also answered previously, is when do we go back to in-person? And I guess we have to go back to in-person at some point. Yeah, July 15th, the um, order expires. Okay. And then at that point, will we be doing, was there another commission or something doing a combination where like people could actually zoom in, you know, even though we will be live? I and now yeah. I can't remember if that was Northampton or somewhere else where they they understand that it's actually allowing more access. And so they were going to make it available still to people to come in. Yeah, remotely. I know there's talks about offering a hybrid option. I don't know if that's something, I don't think it's a requirement. Um, I don't know. So oh. stay tuned. Okey-doke. I mean, it's April already, so I guess there's, we only have, oh, well, we'll have May, June, and July, and then August will be back in person. All right. Can't wait to get that parking pass. <laughs> Talk about the parking pass. <laughs> <laughs> and I joined this commission. Yeah, third <laughs> member, too, so, because if one of us is away, we can't do it remotely, like, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. We need that third. Yep. Yeah. And my term is up in June, Helen. I think I heard something about that. And you are re-upping, correct? <laughs> <laughs> correct? I'll extend for a, a, num a few months, at least. <laughs> oh. Nope. Peace out. I'm done. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> good luck conducting business. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm happy to stay on. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Put that in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the record. <laughs> okay. Anything else then? I don't I'm have good. anything. Thank you both. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes, indeed. Great. Have a good evening. Thanks. Good. Thank you, Andy, for all the Thanks. prep for this. Big no meeting. problem. Thank you. Right. You made it much easier. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.